today's lecture we're going to talk about computation of areas so in order to determine the area determining the area is a very important process in uh, civil engineering and many uh, things on the project depends on the uh, computation of the uh, areas so estimations of areas and also volumes is basic to most engineering schemes such as road alignment reservoirs tunnels and etc so many engineering projects depend on the estimation of the areas and the volumes and the areas of fields are also required uh, for planning and management of projects and also areas may be required in connection with the purchase or sale of land with the subdivision of land or with the grading of land so also estimating the areas and the volume or the area is important uh, in case you want to uh, buy or sell uh, a land area of a land so how to determine the land we have been studied the mathematical formulas in the elementary school we learn how to determine the area of a circle right and also how to determine the area of a square and also how to determine the area of rectangle and also how to determine the area of ellipse and also how to determine the area of uh, trapezoid but the problem is in the reality i'm not gonna find the area look like that right so we need to learn how to determine the area in the field also we learn how to determine the area if i have triangle if i know the height and i know the width i will be able to determine the area of triangle uh, in case that i don't have the height i know the uh, uh, the sides a b c in this case i can use this formula to determine the value of the area or if i know two sides and one angle also i will be able to determine the area it could be this equation or that equation or that equation we already know this we know that if we have a, a regular uh, geometry we will be able to determine the area using these mathematical formulas but now we need to understand how to determine the area in the field of course also we could determine the area from the map but determining the area from the field are more accurate and we have many methods in order to do this first we have division of track into simple figures triangles rectangles and uh, trapezoids so we're gonna take an area and divide it into uh, simpler uh, shapes like triangles rectangles and so on this is the first method also we could use the uh, trapezoidal rule we'll talk about this also we could use uh, the mid ordinate rule and also we could use simpson's rule and finally we could use the coordinates i'm going to walk you through these methods first we're going to start with the uh, area by division into simple figures first method i'm gonna de divide the area into simple figures so like you can see here we have an area or a track and this one this area here it could be divided into simple geometric figures like triangles rectangles uh, 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 trapezoids for example this one could be divided like that triangle here triangle here and so on and here we are going to have uh, also triangle here we are going to have uh, uh, trapezoid trapezoid triangles like this one and then the total of these areas is going to be the uh, uh, the uh, area for uh, this uh, tract so the sides and angles of these figures can be observed in the field okay and their individual areas calculated and totaled after we divided the area into simple uh, 
uh, figures then we are gonna uh, determine the total for these areas also we have the uh, trapezoidal rule this is another method we usually use to determine the areas in trapezoidal rule the area is divided into a number of trapezoids so here for example we have this area and this area is going to be divided into a number of trapezoids trape tra tra trapezoid one two three four five and six for example and the boundaries being assumed to be straight here we have the boundaries the boundaries uh, like curves right but we are going to assume that these boundaries are straight lines even though the boundary is not a straight line but here in the uh, trapezoidal rule we are going to assume the boundaries are straight lines like that and for example here i'm going to lose some areas and some areas and here i'm going to uh, gain uh, some areas so this this areas here is going to balance that areas there so the area of each uh, trapezoid is determined and added together to drive the whole area so in this method we divided the area into a number of trapezoids then we are going to determine the area for each trapezoids and then uh, determine the total for all of these trapezoids so for example here we have uh, the first area consists of two offsets h1 and h2 here also we have area number two we have h2 h3 and so on so now we are going to determine the area for the first section for the first section here the area is going to be uh, h1 plus h2 over 2 times w w represent the distance between the first offset and the last offset we usually divide the area into uh, an equal uh, width of sections so this section here it has the same width also this section has the same width and so on then also i'm going to determine the area for the uh, uh, section number two section number three section number four section number five and section number six then i'm going to sum all these areas so they have all the areas here then i'm going to total them like that when i'm going to get the summation for all of this area you can notice this here i have h1 over 2 and h1 over 2 then i'm gonna have h uh, uh, h2 over 2 again and regarding uh, h3 over 2 here also i'm going to get h3 over 2 all the uh, offset is going to be repeated except h1 over 2 and uh, h7 over 2 while all the other offset is going to be repeated so here i have only one h1 over 2 and h7 over 2 while the rest is going to be repeated h2 over 2 plus h2 over 2 so h2 over 2 plus h2 over 2 is going to give me h2 here i'm going to have h3 h4 h5 and h6 so this one is also going to be simplified more so instead of this we're going to put this instead of this we're going to put this like this one and finally we could put this one and that one together so the final formula is going to be uh, w times h1 plus hn hn it means the last offset so here we have a general formula to determine the area using uh, uh, trapezoid rule here we have general formula uh, hn minus one me uh, it means uh, the uh, the offset next to the last offset okay while here we are going to have the offsets in the middle uh, h1 is the first offset hn is the last offset so here we have uh, general rule it could be used for uh, determining the area for any number of uh, trapezoids so now let's see an example 
about the uh, trapezoidal roll. So here we have this example here. In this example, we need to determine the area between offset 1 and offset 6. And here, the distance and the height of offset are given. So when the distance is 0 here, the height is 0. When the distance is 8, the height is 1.5. When the distance is 16, the height is 2.2. When the distance is 24, the height is 2. When the distance is uh, 32, the height is 2.1. When the distance is 40, the height is 1.1. So all, uh, all this, these data are given in this example. We need to determine the area for that uh, tract okay, using the uh, trapezoidal rule. So I'm going to bring in the formula. Here is a general formula to determine uh, the area. W represents the uh, equal distance between the uh, offsets. So here, between the offsets, we have equal, an equal distance between them, which is 8. So the value of W is 8. The value of H1 is the height of the first uh, offset. Here, the height of the first offset located here when the distance is 0 then the value of the height is zero in this case. Hn represent the last offset. Here the last offset is H6. And the value of H6 is 1.1. So here we are going to put 1.1. H2, here I have H2. Uh, here is going to be H3, H4, and H5. So Hn minus 1 is going to be H. Uh, five, like we mentioned before, uh, we mentioned earlier, H n minus one represent the offset next to the last offset. So now I'm gonna uh, block in the numbers. Here the value of H one, the value of W, the value of H n, and here the value of H two, H three, H four, and H five, and the area came out to be sixty-six point eight meter square. Now also we are going to talk about other method which is similar to the uh, uh, trapezoidal rule which is mid ordinate rule. In the mid ordinate rule we are going to have area like that. Again I am going to divide this uh, track into uh, simple uh, or into a number of trapezoids. Here we are going to have trapezoid 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and so on. Then I'm going to determine the mid ordinate. The mid ordinate, it means that this uh, offset here, we're, we're going to call this offset ordinate. So here we have the first ordinate and the second ordinate. The mid ordinate for the first section is going to be Q1 or O1 plus O2 over 2. So we call this mid ordinate for the first section. Also, I need to determine the mid ordinate for the second section. It's going to be O2 plus O3 over 2. Here also I'm going to determine the mid ordinate for this section and so on. So in this method, I'm going to determine the mid ordinate for each section. Then the total area is going to be D times the summation of mid ordinates. Again, D represent the uh, distance, the equal distance between the sections. The, then the total area, according to the mid ordinate rule, is going to be d times the summation of mid ordinate. Summation of mid ordinate, uh, it means that I'm going to sum all of these ordinates which I calculated earlier. So this method also it's similar to the uh, uh, trapezoidal rule. So now let's see an example regarding this method. So in this method, we need to determine the area for this tract. And this tract has been uh, sections into a number of trapezoids. So this is the first section, second section, third section, fourth section, and fifth section. And here is the reference for us. The distance is zero. The distance here is eight. 16, 24, and so on. 
and for the uh, the first point here the height is zero this in the second point the height is 1.5 and in the third point the height is 2.5 and so on now we need to determine the area using uh, the uh, mid ordinate rule so we need to put the formula in order to determine the area using the mid ordinate rule the total area is going to be d times the summation of mid ordinates the value of d is 8 and uh, in order to determine the summation of mid ordinate i need to determine the ordinate for each section so now i'm, I'm going to determine the ordinate for the first section it's going to be zero because this height is zero and this one is 1.5 it's going to be zero plus 1.5 over two which is 0 0.75 so now i determine the mid ordinate for the first section then i'm going to determine the mid ordinate for the uh, second section it's going to be 1.5 plus 2.2 over 2 which is 1.85 and so on also i need to determine the mid ordinate for this section and for that section and for that section now uh, i'm in position to use the formula i'm going to sum all of these mid ordinates and i'm going to multiply them by d which is the uh, uh, equal distance between the sections or between the ordinates so here i have the area here i have the mid ordinates now the total area is going to be eight times the summation of the mid ordinate it's this one plus that one plus that one plus that one plus that one and the area came out to be 62.8 meter square so this method is going to give me a value equal to the method of the trapezoidal rule now i'm gonna move to other method which is simpson's rule this one is very famous method and in this method again we are going to uh, uh, have sec a number of sections like that a number of trapezoids sections like that but in this method remember in the trapezoidal rule we assume the boundaries to be straights right but in this method the boundaries are assumed to be parabolic uh, arcs so the boundaries here in this method are assumed to be parabolic arc not made of a series of straight lines this is a difference between the simpson's rule and trapezoidal rule and this method is more accurate since we are not going to assume the boundaries to be a straight line okay so this one is more accurate but the formula that is to be used is more complicated than the trapezoidal rule and in order to use the simpsons method we have a rule for that the number of offset should be odd the number of offset should be odd otherwise you are not going to you are not going to be able to use the simpsons rule okay so here for example we are gonna count the number of offsets we have one two three four five six and seven so here the number is odd and we are in position to determine uh, the area using simpson's rule and the effect has been implemented in the formula the effect of uh, assume uh, this one is parabolic arcs are implemented in the formula and the formula uh, uh, for determine the area using simpson rule is just like that the area equals l over 2 l is the uh, equal distance between the offsets okay then it's going to be multiplied by o1 o1 represent the first offset on represent the last offset then plus four uh, summation of events of offsets so here i'm going to look for the even of offsets like uh, o2 o4 and o6 these are uh, even offsets then 
plus 2 times the summation of the remaining odd of the offset. The remaining odd, it means that all the odd other than the first and the last uh, offset. Okay, yeah, remember we already used the first offset here and the last offset there. The remaining odd of offset, it means the uh, 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 Q3 and Q5 in this example. You should not include the first offset and the last offset. Okay. So now let's see an example in order to uh, use the Simpsons rule. Here we have five offsets in this area. This area has been uh, divided into a number of trapezoids and here we have five offsets and we need to determine the area between these offsets in order uh, using Simpson's rule. Here the data uh, are given here when the distance is zero here the height is zero when the distance is eight the height is 1.5 when the distance is 16 the height is 2.2 when the distance is 24 if the height is 2 when the distance is 32 the height is 2.1 so now we need to determine the area using simpson's rule so we need to bring the formula here the formula and we explain the formula so the value of l is going to be 8 because it represents the equal distance between the offsets the value of O1, the first offset, the value of the first offset is zero, and the value of the uh, uh, last offset is 2.1. Then we have the even of offsets. The even of offsets, we have the second offset, offset, and here we have the fourth offset, which means that it's gonna be 1.2 plus two. So this one here, 1.5 plus two. Then here we have the remaining odd of offsets. How many odd offsets do we have? We have five. We have three. We have one, three, and five. But here it says remaining odds, which means that I'm going to exclude the first and the last because I already used them here. So I have only the third offset, which is 2.2. So we're going to have 8.3 the value of l is 8 here we have o1 the first offset on the last offset here uh, the summation of even of offsets i have this one offset 2 and offset 4 and the remaining odd of offsets we have only offset 3 and we are going to plug all of this number in and then determine the area the area came out to be 54.66 meter squared. We have another example, but in this example, I'm going to show you what will happen if the number of the offsets uh, is even number. So in this example, they say that the following offsets and between them we have eight meter apart were measured at right angles from a traverse line to an irregular boundary. So here we have a line of traverse, the line is straight, and we have irregular boundary. So it's a case similar to this one. We have a line of traverse, of course it's going to be straight, and here we have irregular boundary. And here we have a number of offsets, and we need to do to determine the area between the traverse line and the irregular boundary using Simpson's rule. Before using the Simpson's rule, I need to count the number of offsets because we have a condition on Simpson's rule. In order to use Simpson's rule, the number of offsets should be uh, should be odd. So here I'm going to count. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the number of, of, uh, of offset in this case is even, not odd. We have 10 offsets. So in this case, what we are going to do, in this case, I need either to exclude this offset or that offset. So this area here, between the area between 3.1 and 0, I'm going to exclude the area. 
I'm going to assume that the first offset is 0 and the last offset is 3.1. Then what will happen to this area between 3.1 and 0? This one is going to be calculated using trapezoidal rule. Okay, so I'm going to apply in this case because I have I don't have any options other than calculate the area between uh, 3.1 and 0 alone. So the area between 3.1 and 0 is going to be determined alone, and the area from the uh, this offset and that offset is going to be determined using Simpson rule. And in the end, I'm going to get the total uh, using the Simpson's rule and the trapezoidal rule. So they are an even number of offsets, 10 offsets. Hence, calculate the area between the first and the ninth offset, this one and that one, uh, using Simpson's rule. And the area between the ninth offset and the tenth offset uh, is going to be uh, determined using a trapezoidal rule. So I'm going to apply the formula of Simpson's rule for the offsets between the first and the ninth. Okay. So here, uh, uh, the area is going to be applied from one to nine. So here, uh, he explained uh, the area is going to be determined uh, between the first offset and the ninth offset. So the value of L is eight because this one is the equal distance between the offsets. The value of uh, uh, O1, the first offset, is going to be 0. And the value of ON is going to be 3.1, is the last offset. Then here, we have the uh, uh, summation for the even of offsets. We're going to have this one, and this one, and this one, and that one. And the remaining offsets, we're going to have this one, and this one, and this one. So here, the first offset is going to be 0. The last offset is going to be 3.1. The, e, uh, the even offsets is going to be this one, and this one, and this one, and that one. And the odd offsets is going to be 5.5, 8.6, and 7.3. I'm not going to include the first and the last, like we, like I explained earlier. So here, then I'm going to block, block in the numbers into the formulas, to this formula here, and then the area came out to be uh, three seven uh, seventy point uh, uh, nine meter square. And now, do you think the problem is over? No, because we forget about the area between. Uh, the offsets uh, 3.1 and 0 here. And we are going to determine this using the uh, uh, trapezoidal rule. So here we have, we should not forget the area between the ninth and the tenth offset. I'm going to use the trapezoidal rule. The uh, distance between them is 8. And this one is going to be 3.1 plus 0 over to according to uh, trapezoidal rule. So now, in order to get the total area, I need to uh, sum this one and that one. So the total area from 1 to 10 is going to be this one plus that one. And the area came out to be 383.3 meters squared. So here, this, in this example, uh, it's clear what to do in case I have even number. Because the uh, the condition to use Simpson's rule, the number of offsets should be odd. So now we are going to move to a new method, which is area from coordinates. If you have coordinates, we are going to use these coordinates to determine the area. And this one, it's very powerful method. And the uh, total station nowadays it has a software to help you to determine the area uh, using the coordinates because through the total station you are going to locate the coordinates and therefore you will be in a position to determine the area so here in order to show you how to determine the area using the coordinate 
first we're gonna bring a small or a simple uh, uh, shape here we have triangle in the triangle we're gonna have three coordinates we have a b and c he is the north and he is the east for the coordinate uh, a the uh, we have y1 x1 for the second station here we have y2 x2 and here in the uh, station c we have y3 x3 we need to determine this area the area of triangle so in order to do that i'm going to uh, divide this shape into a number of trapezoids we are going to have a b q p a b q p this one is the first trapezoid and also we are going to have p uh, b c uh, r q this is the second trapezoid and finally we are going to have a c r p the uh, last uh, trapezoid so we are going to say that the area of a b c is uh, equal to the area of this trapezoid a b q p plus the area of this trapezoid b c r q minus this area here the area of a c r p okay so to determine the area of this triangle we divided this shape into a number of trapezoids why i have done this because determine the uh, trapezoid is easy so now we know that the area of uh, trapezoid is the mean height times the width so if, in order to determine the area of this trapezoid i need to determine the the mean height and then i'm going to multiply it by the width so again i have this triangle i'm going to determine the area of this trapezoid plus the area of that trapezoid and then I'm going to subtract the area of this trapezoid. And we know that uh, the, uh, the area of trapezoid uh, is the um, uh, mean height times the width. So first, I'm going to determine the area of this trapezoid, A, B, Q, P. So the area of trapezoid is the mean height times the width. The width is the distance from here to here. So the distance from here to here is going to be y2 minus y1, since I know the coordinate. So the distance from here to here is going to be y2 minus y1. Remember, this direction is y here in surveying, and this direction represents x. So the width will be uh, y2 minus y1. Now what about the mean height? The distance from here to here is x1. And the distance from here to here is x2. This one the first offset, this one the second offset. The mean height will be x1 plus x2 over 2. So the area of the uh, uh, trapezoid ABQP will be 1 over 2 x1 plus x2. This part represents the mean height. And y2 minus y1, this one represents the width. Similarly, I'm going to determine the area of B, C, R, Q, this a trapezoid. I'm going to do this in the similar manner. First, I need to know the width. The width will be Y3 minus Y2. And the mean height is going to be X2, the distance from here to here. And uh, plus the distance from here to here, which is X3. So x2 plus x3 over 2 represent the mean height for this uh, trapezoid. So the area for BCRQ is going to be 1 over 2 times x2 plus x3. This one represent the mean height times y th y3 minus y2. This represent the width. Similarly, I can also determine the area of ACRP. Again. The width is going to be the distance from here to here, which is y3 
minus y1 and the mean height is going to be this distance x1 plus this distance x3 over 2. So this x1 plus x3 over 2 represent the mean height. So here we have the mean height and here we have the width. So now I express all of the, these areas of trapezoid using coordinates, right? So now I need to get the area of the uh, triangle ABC. I'm going to use this here. So this one plus that one minus that one is going to give me the area for this triangle using coordinates because here we have we have only coordinates. So I'm going to add them together. This one here plus this one minus this one. Then I'm going to simplify. I'm going to simplify this formula. Here, for example, I'm going to take 1 over 2 as a common factor and put it on the uh, left hand side like that. Then I'm going to simplify the formula more. I'm going to multiply all of these terms together. I'm going to get this one here. Then I'm going to take out all the similar parts. I'm going to take them out. Then the final formula is going to be like that. We are going to have only six terms. One, two, three, four, five, and six. We have three coordinates. Then we are going to have uh, six uh, terms. Also, this could be simplified more. We could put the positive part together and the negative part together. So this one also could be arranged to be like that. This one and this one and this one, we're going to put them together. While the negative uh, terms also, we can arrange them together. This one, and this one, and this one, like that. So <laughs> even though this formula has been drive for triangle, for only three sides, right? But this one, it could be generalized uh, for uh, a number of n sides. This formula, <clears throat> it has been derived for simple triangle, but it could be generalized for any number of sides. So, in order to do that, the formula is going to be like the following. Here we have 2 times the area, here we have 2 times the area. Here we have x1, y2, x1, y2. The last term, or the last two terms here, it's going to be x n minus 1 and y n plus x n and y 1. This is going to be the last two terms. While the last two terms in the second part is going to be y n minus 1, x n plus y n times x 1. Of course, x n minus 1 represents the, the, the coordinate before the last coordinate, and y n represents the last coordinate in the uh, east direction and here xn represent the last coordinate in the north direction and so on so I can use this formula here to determine the area for any number of coordinates not only for triangle remember when we determine the, uh, the uh, area using the coordinates the, uh, the numbering was clockwise. So here, you get back, we said that A, B, C. So always the numbering was clockwise. For this area, the numbering, we said that A, B, Q, P. Everything was clockwise. Also here. So the numbering is clockwise. Remember, in order to determine an area using coordinate, the number should be clockwise or anti-clockwise okay you should go clockwise or anti-clockwise for example don't go from here to here and then to here and then to here and so uh, like that the the formula is not going to work you should go either clockwise or anti-clockwise okay so that these formulas is going to be valid for you even in the field, 
you are going to use total station, you should go clockwise or you should go anti-clockwise. These formulas have been derived using uh, uh, the numbering was uh, clockwise. But even if you go anti-clockwise, it's not going to change uh, uh, a lot of things. We're going to see what will happen if I'm going to go counterclockwise. So here, we stopped here at this uh, formula. Here we have the general formula like that. And if the figure is numbered in the opposite direction, which means that counterclockwise, he says that the signs of the two brackets are reverse. So the signs, this one is going to be positive, and this one is going to be negative in case the numbering was anticlockwise. So what we'll what we what we will change is this term is going to be positive and this term is going to be negative. Okay. So in case that you uh, you uh, your numbering was anticlockwise, this term is going to be positive and this term is going to be negative. Okay. So it's the only difference if you if you are going to count uh, counterclockwise. So if you are counting clockwise, then you are going to use this formula. If you are going to count anticlockwise or counterclockwise, you are going to use this formula here with the yellow color. So in order to sum everything, here is this formula if the number is clockwise, and this formula if the number counterclockwise. Uh, in the case of clockwise, the xy is going to be positive. The xy summation is going to be positive, while if the numbering is counterclockwise, the yx summation is going to be positive, and the x uh, y is going to be negative. Yx positive, xy negative. Now, you may say that it's difficult for me to memorize these formulas. You are right. It's difficult to memorize this. That is why I'm going to introduce to you a simple method so that you can determine the area without memorizing these formulas. So let's see how to do that. So assume that the numbering is clockwise, which means that I'm going to use this formula, right? But again, I'm not going to memorize this formula. What I will do, I'm going to assemble a table like that. I'm going to have five columns. First column is the points, second point the uh, X coordinate, Y coordinate, and here we are going to have the uh, uh, X, Y component. Remember, here always I have X, Y component, X, Y component. So this one I'm going to call it X, Y component, and this one, this part, I'm going to call it Y, X component. Then I'm going to put the first coordinate here. Assume that you need to determine the area for uh, 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 traverse of five coordinates. Then I'm going to put here in the uh, second row, I'm going to put the first coordinate, second coordinate, third coordinate, fourth, uh, fourth coordinate, fifth coordinate. Then I'm going to put the first coordinate again. Remember this, I'm going to put all the coordinates plus the first coordinate again. So I'm going to start with the first coordinate and finish also with the first coordinate. So this, the first coordinate is going to be repeated. Then I'm going to multiply the, the value of X from the first row with the value of Y from the second row. So I'm going to multiply this one times that one, 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 and this one times that one. So X1, Y2, are going to put it here x2 y3 i'm gonna put it there x3 y4 i'm gonna put it here i'm gonna put this there i'm gonna put this here so if you are going to look to the formula you are gonna see that x1 y1 is here x2 y3 is here x3 y4 is here and so on and regarding the uh, uh, second component I'm going to uh, multiply using this uh, shape. I'm going to multiply y1 from the first row times x2, y2 times x3, y3 times x4, y4 times x5, y5 times x1. 
So I'm going to multiply this one by this one and so on. So this one times that one, I'm going to put it here. This one times that one, I'm going to put it there and so on. Then we are going to notice that this one represents this. This one here represents this. This one here represents this and so on. Regarding the last term, the last term is yn and the n in this case is 5. Like you can see here, y5 times x1. And then I'm going to sum all of this together. So in order to get the area, the area is going to be 1 over 2. So this one, I'm going to move this one to the right hand side. It's going to be 1 over 2 times summa uh, summation of the first component minus the summation of the second component. So 1 over 2 times summation 1 minus summation 2 is going to give me the value of the area. And here we put the absolute values. Here we are going to take the absolute value for summation 1 minus summation 2. Why I should do this? Because if the numbering is clockwise, then you are not going to worry about the absolute value because the value of the uh, summation 1 is going to be bigger than summation 2, always, because the area cannot be negative. Okay? But if the, the, the numbering was counterclockwise, then summation 2 is going to be bigger than summation 1. And because we don't want to change this formula, then we are going to take the absolute value. Okay? So, if the numbering is clockwise, this formula should be summation 2 minus summation 1. But because we, do, we don't want to change the formula, then that's why we need to take the absolute value for the uh, summation. So always remember this. If the numbering is clockwise, then summation 1 always will be bigger than summation 2. If the numbering is counterclockwise, then summation 2 is going to be bigger than summation 1. Okay, so either cases, you are going to take the absolute value. Okay, so don't worry about this, but it's, like, it's going to be like a check for you. If the uh, numbering is count, uh, clockwise, then summation 1 is going to be bigger. If the numbering is counterclockwise, then summation 2 is going to be bigger. So we are going to use this method in order to determine the area. If you can memorize it, okay. But... I don't think this is going to work for you, so it's better to use this table. So now let's see an example to compute the area for a tra traverse using the method of the coordinate. Here we have a traverse uh, consists of uh, five stations. We have A, B, C, D, E. So we have traverse of five points, five coordinates. We need to determine the area. And the coordinates are coordinates are given. And here I said that the numbering is clockwise. So the first step, I need to uh, uh, I need to make a table here. Yeah. Table like this one. We're gonna have five columns. Then well, I'm going to arrange the coordinates. Here I'm gonna put the first coordinate, the value of x and the value of y. Here the value of x, and here's the value of y. Then I'm gonna put the second coordinate, the value of x, and the value of y, and so on. I'm going to start with the first coordinate and also finish with the first coordinate. The first coordinate is going to be repeated. Then in the uh, fourth column, I'm going to have the xy summation and yx summation. Okay, so now I'm going to multiply this one by that one, this one by, by that one. So 50 times uh, 7, 6 times 6, and so on. So this one is going to give me 350. This one times that one is going to give me 42. This one times that one is going to give me 55. And so on. Then I'm going to get the summation. I'm going to call this summation 1. It came out to be uh, 1155. Similarly, to get the yx component, I'm going to mu multiply this one by that one, this one by that one and so on. So 40 times 60 is uh, 240, 70 times 11, 77, and so on. 
until I get the submission. So here I have submission one and submission two. And no surprise here, the uh, first summation is bigger than the second summation because the numbering is, clock, uh, is clockwise in this case. Then I'm going to apply the formula. The area is one over two times the uh, first summation minus the second summation. In that case, I'm going to take the absolute value in case the numbering is clockwise. And the area came out to be 114.5 meter square. This is how we determine the area using uh, the coordinates. So I'm going to stop here. If you have any uh, questions, please ask me.